What is going on guys? It's Billy the Kid here, and I've got a special Battlefield 3 video for you guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how to dominate the skies over the battlefield, flying the FA-18 EF Super Hornet and the SU-35 BM Flanker fighter jets. I'll be showing you different combat maneuvers and the basics of air combat in jet fighters to help you and your team control the skies of the battlefield. So let's begin. So the first thing you need to do is go to options, go to the control layout and switch it to a control layout that you are comfortable with. It's very important that you find a layout that you are familiar with in terms of where the buttons are, what the buttons do and what sticks to use and what they do as well. I use the lefty jet buttons and the south paw jet sticks. This is a layout that I have used since the release of the game and since I had experience in playing air combat simulator games on both PC and on console, I had to look for something that I was comfortable with. But you new guys out there are probably going to have to go through a private server or an empty match and get some flying time and get comfortable with a layout that you are familiar with. It's very important that you get one that you're familiar with as this will aid you in air combat. Next, we are going to go over what weapons and devices you should use with your jet fighter. This part can be critical, as you need to choose a good layout for the situation at hand. If the enemy are dominating the skies with their own fighter jets and attack helicopters, go with heat seekers and try and knock them down. Is the enemy tanks giving your troops a hard time? Go with rocket pods or guided missile to help your troops break through the enemy lines of defense. This again is my layout. I always use air radar for it is critical to control the skies and telling your teammates on the ground of enemy armor and equipment such as mobile spawn points and letting them know where the enemy defense positions are, on which flank should they attack, should they go in with armor on the left or the right. This is critical for using air radar, it will show you where the enemy is in terms of their position, direction and speed. Now that we have our layout itself complete, we are now going to go over the rules of air combat. If you are struggling in aerial combat and you can't seem to get any kills with jets but you want to improve, you must learn the basic rules of air combat. Rule number one, try to secure the upper hand before attacking. If possible, keep the sun behind you. It's essential in any air battle scenario that you get the first shot off on the enemy. The easiest way to do this is to remain hidden from your enemy, and the easiest way to do this in Battlefield 3 is to fly at a high altitude and with the sun behind you. He won't be able to see you as long as he doesn't have air radar on, and with you flying high and behind the sun, you can pounce on him from above and get the easy kill. Rule number two, always continue with an attack you have begun. A lot of times I've seen rookie pilots dogfight with an enemy fighter jet only to disengage and then try and destroy an enemy tank or attack helicopter, only for that enemy jet then to turn around and destroy the rookie pilot out of the sky. It's essential that once you start a dogfight with an enemy fighter jet, you don't deviate or disengage to destroy another target. You must absolutely destroy that fighter jet so that he does not pose an immediate threat to either you or your teammates. Rule number three. Only fire at close range and when the opponent is properly in your sights. In dogfighting, the closer you are to your target, the better chances you have at destroying it in one pass. Even if you only disable the target, it's put him out of action until he can repair his vehicle. So remember, get on at 6 o'clock, get as close as possible and fire. If you're firing from longer range, don't forget to lead your target. Rule number 4. You should always try to keep your eye on your opponent. It's very important to always keep track of where your target is. Air radar will help you out greatly in acquiring targets for you, but if you lose sight of your target, try switching to third person view and try to find him as soon as possible. The sooner you find him, the better chances you have at destroying him. Rule number 5. In any type of attack, it is essential to attack your opponent from behind. When you are dogfighting an enemy jet, it's very important that you get behind him without him noticing. 
This will allow you to engage him on his blind side. It's also important that you land the shots on target. If you miss, he will begin using evasive maneuvers to try and shake you off. So stay on his tail and he won't get an opportunity to go on the offensive. Rule number 6. If your opponent dives to attack you, do not try to run away, but fly to meet it. In this unedited clip, I'll show you how I, in an SU-35BM, managed to evade two FA-18EFs Super Hornets. So this was on Caspian Border, and I think this was yesterday I filmed this. But you can see that they're on the air radar, and it's crucial to figure out where they are. Now you can see two enemy jets, and I'm trying to get on one of their tails. Now you see that they're both trying to attack me, and right there I lost one of them, and I quickly looked for the air radar to where he is, and there he is coming head on to try and attack me. His wingman sees this, and then they both seem to try and gang up on me and try and get an easy kill. And this is why I'm rolling around all over the place trying to shake them off. As long as you keep moving, they're not going to get an easy shot on you, even if they have heat seekers or their cannon. And right there I try a, a maneuver called the Cobra, and it sort of semi-works. And I'll go into that Cobra maneuver later on in this video on how to use it effectively. So I figure out then the odds are against me, so I fly back towards the airbase, and they disable me with that shot, and then they disable me again in a few minutes. But the AA in our airbase is lighting them up, and now I'm disabled again. It looks like I'm about to crash right here, but I managed to pull up just in time. But the AA is keeping them at bay. If you look at the air radar now, they're a mile away. So now I have plenty of time to calculate where I want to go, and I need time to fix the aircraft. This is where the fire extinguisher comes into its own. It's very, very useful to get you out of situations like that. Now, where are the fighters now? They think I'm down. They think I crashed. Surely I was down, but they disabled me twice. He comes head on at me, which is the wrong thing to do, because now he's on the defensive while his wingman is trying to get me. But now the odds are against me again, because now there's two fire jets and an attack helicopter all trying to get me. When the odds aren't in your favor, don't be afraid to turn back and go back towards the airbase for maybe stinger support or if somebody's on the AA to get them off your tail. The second that the AA goes up, they won't go near the airbase. It's too risky for them. So now you see he turned around, which is the wrong thing to do, and now both of them are trying to fly defensively while I'm trying to attack aggressively. He tries to strafe the empty SU-35 on the ground, which is the wrong thing to do because now he's flying nice and steady while I get a good shot on him. Now my shots aren't going to be able to get him fully. See, where's his wingman? That's the one bad thing that happened here. His wingman is nowhere near him, and now he's on his own. Now I get the disable there, and he's trying to evade it. But now his wingman, look at the air radar. His wingman is trying to get back, but he bailed out of the jet, so it's too late for him. So now it's one on one. Again, the odds are against me, so I fly back towards the airbase. I'm, I'm continually taking hits from him, his cannon fire, so he's pretty good. He's not great, but he's pretty good. <laughs> So I could fly back to the airbase for more AA support, and luckily for me, it looks like the attack helicopter was taken off as well. So now he's got the AA, and the SU-35 was taken off the runway as well. So now his his odds are against him, and he's trying to escape, flying very fast and low. Well, I see him, and it looks like he's trying to get back to his airbase. I see him, lead my target, fire the cannon, I get a couple of hits on him, but he starts to turn again. Here's a tip, if you're in a turning battle, look what I do, look, I decelerate, and then accelerate really quickly, putting in the afterburner. If you do this, your turning radius increases, and you'll be able to get the shot. Look, I decelerate, accelerate, again, and again, and again. If you lose sight of them, go into third-person view again, and pick them up. If you have to spot them, spot them. There I get to disable, but it's not necessarily the end of it. Remember, just like me, he could have his fire extinguisher on, and it looks like he did. And uh, I stay on his tail. Whatever you do, don't let an enemy aircraft, whether it's a chopper or a jet, off if you disable him. That's not mean. It doesn't mean he's finished. Always continue with the attack until you've absolutely 100% finished him off. Either he bails out or he crashes to the ground or whatever. This goes on for a little while, and he tries to evade me over and over again. But I stay in his tail. Don't give him a respite, and he eventually crashes into the ground like that. So that's a good example of what to do. There's his wingman taking off again. This, this is a good example of what to do 
if the odds are against you. Don't be afraid to fall back for the airbase, for the AA, to get some support from your friendlies, and just make sure you stay aggressive. Stay on their tail, don't let them up. Even if you disable them, continue with the attack. Make sure you see him crash into the ground if you think he's crashed into the ground. Make sure you stay on his tail. And this is a good example of how powerful the cannon is. Even though, though it's long range, I disable him and quickly take him out. That is a very good example of how you can defeat the odds, even though it's two on one. Rule number seven. When over the enemy's lines, never forget your own line of retreat. As before mentioned, when the odds are against you, don't be afraid to turn around and head back towards friendly lines. Even if they disable you, you can still bail out and get picked up by a tank or a jeep, or even get yourself a new jet. But if you bail out over enemy lines, the odds of you getting back safely are very greatly reduced. You could theoretically bail out over a flag and start capping it, but the enemy will see this and rush as many troops as possible to the area to prevent it being captured. If your friends can spawn on you, this greatly increases the chance of you getting back up quickly and getting back to base safely. Rule number 8. In principle, it is better to attack in groups rather than on your own. If you have a friend who is maybe a better pilot than you are, don't be afraid to ask him to get in the jet with you and to back you up. It's much better to attack in groups of two, or if you have two other friends in the attack helicopter, in groups of four. With this layout, you can dominate the skies against enemy aircraft as well as ground forces. When flying with your friends, make sure you stay as close together as possible. The closer you are, the more mutual support you can offer in case they get into trouble. The Cobra maneuver is useful when a combatant is being pursued closely by an enemy jet. By ex executing the Cobra maneuver, the pursuer may overrun the suddenly slowed pursued, and as the previously pursued drops out of the Cobra, an opportunity for firing weapons may be presented. The maneuver has you fly straight and level, then when the enemy fire is very close behind you, you decrease your speed significantly and raise your nose of the aircraft straight up. The enemy won't expect this and will overshoot you. Then you lower your nose back to level flight, pushing the afterburner to gain speed. Now air radar is absolutely crucial to performing this maneuver, as you have to see how close the enemy jet is to you before performing the Cobra. If you perform it too early, he will have time he needs to shoot you with his cannon. I find this maneuver very useful when getting rid of an enemy fighter jet who just won't go away. He knows what he's doing, he knows that if he breaks off, he'll probably get shot down by me. So it's very useful, I find, when I slow the aircraft all the way down, I look at my air radar to make sure he's as close as possible. Then I pitch the nose straight up in the air, he'll overshoot me. And once I see he's right past me, I ignite the afterburners, turn where he's turning, and now I'm on his tail. Well guys, that just about wraps it up. I want to thank you for watching. I hope these tips and tricks for jet combat help you out in Battlefield 3. Just remember the rules of air combat and you should be getting on fine. Once again, I thank you for watching. This has been Billy the Kid. Please comment, rate, and subscribe on how these tips helped you out. And subscribe for more. Thanks guys. And we'll see you again.